Connex West, what a road. Let me tell you about my uh, first uh, contact with this concept. I was on the board of Infrastructure Australia and for a couple of years we'd been struggling with Sydney and its traffic and its freight issues and trying to particularly find ways to improve the access to the port and the airport and um, various proposals came in that included some of these potential roads uh, to fix the freight. You could never get a benefit cost ratio above about 0.4 which is pathetic and you just don't do that. So next we heard was that uh, some grab bag of roads had been pulled together to bring cars in because that's the only way to make the benefit cost ratio add up. This is not a great way to plan a city because essentially what you're doing is saying well let's just find something that gets a higher benefit cost ratio and it must be good. Well it, it'll be better but it, it won't necessarily be best for the city and, and that's essentially what happened. We ended up with a huge conglomeration of roads that are essentially designed to create a better, better benefit cost ratio but not a better system. Now was the problem who's going to go and who's going to back this and uh, suddenly along came a politician called Tony Abbott who said okay I'll do it I'll make it part of my roads of the 21st century uh, and, and suddenly we had the biggest road project in the world currently and uh, you've got to do it. Well this had really dropped out of the sky. This had nothing to do with Infrastructure Australia processes, nothing about our strategic approach to building transport, nothing really about getting better economic productivity let alone sustainability outcomes. So it was a failure as far as I'm concerned and it was um, purely dropped out of the sky. Now the alternative is that you, you really want to build the cities of the 21st century, not the roads, because this in fact is an approach that goes back to the 1960s, it's not 21st century at all. So what's happening around the world is that cities are now competing on how walkable they are and how good their public transport is, because the knowledge economy is now the difference between cities. If you can have a thriving, productive, creative, innovative knowledge economy, then you can compete. Young people will stay and work with you. They won't go to Paris and London and New York. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll stay in your city and they'll do creative things. But they want to live in urban situations. They want walkability. Uh, I saw a report today from Smart Growth America which shows that in Boston, 70% of the young creative uh, people working in the knowledge economy now live in these highly walkable areas. Um, it, it's what they want in order to work. They cannot afford the time to spend uh, on long commutes and they must have time to come together with lots of different people in an urban situation. So knowledge economy needs spatial efficiency and if you want spatial efficiency, you need spatially efficient modes. Public transport, cycling and walking are very spatially efficient. The other part of the economy is the consumer economy, and that's very suburban. It's, it's, it, it, it locates itself around suburban shopping centres, um, and people are basically um, getting work in those areas in order to help dish out the consumption. Um, it's not really very creative. Those jobs are, are declining. Uh, they've never been very competitive. They can happen anywhere and uh, they easily get taken over by automation. So um, cities really need knowledge economy. Uh, the roads of the 21st century are going to help the consumption economy only and they will not help the knowledge economy. And that's a very global phenomenon. Uh, so let, let's get it clear that this is, this is not some kind of green conspiracy to try and stop this road. 
uh, we're, we're talking serious economic futures for the city. And Sydney is our great competitor in the world for knowledge economy jobs. Uh, the other cities are all doing their bit um, and they are competing uh, with, largely with Sydney. Uh, but Sydney is our global city and it really needs to keep that competitive edge. Uh, it's, it's got a wonderful centre which is mostly for walk, people walking, 80 to 90 per cent of people at any time are walking, uh, 80 per cent of people get there by public transport, it's absolutely full as far as cars go so if you're going to tip more traffic in there you're just destroying it because they won't have anywhere to park for a start, they'll just be stuck on the roads. Completely stupid to get more cars into the city centre and the inner area in general where most of the uh, knowledge economy jobs are. The new expanding parts of this knowledge economy, the bays, uh, I went to that event and it was um, uh, very exciting to hear uh, the uh, New South Wales government talk about their metropolitan strategy which was all about centres and making city centres more walkable and more public transport oriented and I thought this is exactly what Sydney needs and we we, uh, uh, we didn't hear a word about Connex West because it didn't fit in that whole strategy. Uh, the bays will be the next next part of the CBD to be developed and it is going to be like that. It has to be walkable, it has to be highly linked by good public transport. To tip more people in there with cars will ruin it. Absolutely no point. And then the, the rest of uh, Sydney, including the West, has a number of centres that are, are doing well and want to do better. And they're going to do better with knowledge economy jobs when they get better public transport and better walkability. Parramatta's getting its light rail. Fantastic. It's a very good example of how you can make a, a, a centre in the region of, of, of the West into a, a really important global city. So that's the agenda uh, and somehow Connex Wex doesn't sort of fit that. It, it, it seems out of kilter. Uh, I can't believe that New South Wales government would have really wanted this in, in their uh, array of strategic plans. Um, so it's, it's clearly been dropped uh, from on high. Uh, it should be stopped. It's not appropriate. Uh, and really the next phase is to find out how best to put money and resources and planning into improving the public transport and the walkability in, in uh, the CBD, the bays and the, uh, certainly the inner north doesn't need any more roads uh, and, and cars in it and, and the centres. All of these are Sydney's agenda um, and we should rethink how to plan for that and just if you want a you know a, a very sizable amount of money 10 to 15 billion whatever it is um, well let's put it into that because that's where the competitive future is for Sydney uh, and it's a much more livable city as a result um, it's not a city that uh, you'd, you'd want to uh, say would even line up with the uh, roads of the 21st century city being dropped on it. Um, let's get serious about providing a better future for Sydney and uh, throw this one out.